In 1993, researchers developed a new tool called CRISPR that made it possible to use genetic editing to treat fatal diseases. Nevertheless, the US government outlawed CRISPR in 2016 because to the possibility of misuse, branding it a weapon of mass destruction. The Athena-1 space station is currently in utter disrepair and all of the crew members are dead, but for Carrie, who is pleading for assistance in the control room. Carrie must first collect the mutagen samples, because her supervisor would not release the hatch to the escape capsule without her doing so. Carrie searches through the wreck in her fear and need to survive and collects the three samples, but sadly, the adversary has noticed her. It turns out that a botched experiment produced a monsterized mutant rat that went insane and is now pursuing Carrie. The astronaut runs off as quickly as she can, escaping the debris and the flames, and she enters the escape capsule just in time for the rat to grab her. Unfortunately, the rat's rampage also damaged the capsule, so it explodes and kills Carrie, as the parts fall to Earth, as Carrie escapes and witnesses the station explode. Later, at the San Diego Wildlife Sanctuary, primatologist Davis shows the gorilla enclosure to his friend Nelson, two new employees, and himself. Davis utilizes sign language to settle down the most aggressive newcomer Pavo, because he is upsetting the females. At that point Davis's closest buddy George arrives, and Pavo becomes hostile once more, due to the presence of a second male gorilla. When one of the workers becomes frightened and attempts to flee, Pavo chases after him and pushes him to the ground. George intervenes, scaring Pavo away before anything worse may happen. After it's over, George and Davis joke about a lot while communicating through sign language, and Davis reminds George that Pavo is now part of the family and needs to be protected as well. Davis requests a fist bump, and George first extends his middle finger to him. Following that, a coworker approaches Davis about going out, but he declines, and Nelson makes fun of him for preferring animals to people. The three mutagen canisters that Carrie retrieved eventually make their way to Earth later that night. One flies inside the sanctuary and shoots its contents at George, while the third one falls into the river and is ingested by a crocodile, the second one lands in the forest and is discovered by a wolf. The following day, when Davis visits the sanctuary, Nelson informs him of some awful news. George is acting strangely aggressively and has broken into the grizzly enclosure where he murdered a bear. When Davis goes to check on George, he finds that the gorilla has also been hurt by the bear. The biggest surprise is that George has gotten significantly bigger. He is dejected and apologizes for his error. When Davis's crew searches the region and discovers the canister, Davis chooses to store it for future study. Later he examines George's blood work and concludes that it is inexplicable because growth hormone which should have quickly killed George, is present in lethal concentrations. Nelson believes George should be killed, but Davis refuses to do so until they get more information. Brett and Claire, who are siblings, are arguing in the meantime. Brett is upset about all the money they lost when the station detonated, because their business Energine is the one behind the research of the mutagen. Claire is content with the outcomes, though, as the mutated rat's confirmation that the Project Rampage experiment was successful makes her happy. She also has optimism for advancement, because a report from the Meteor Society reveals the location of one of the containers, which was built to withstand re-entry. Burke and his private military team are hired by her to retrieve the container. Burke's crew visits the forest and learns that the canister has been destroyed and empty in addition to the deaths of all the wolves, which they then report to Claire. As a result, she realizes the wolf is evolving, and she gives Burke the order to trap it. Kate, who lives in the city, watches the news and finds out about both the tragedy on Athena 1 and George's bear attack. She realizes the connection because she was formerly an Energine scientist, hurries to the sanctuary, and informs Davis that the canister he discovered contains a sample she created. Davis is skeptical about her, but Kate starts listing all the symptoms George is experiencing to show Davis, she is the real deal, and the only person who can treat George. It turns out that the mutagen is altering George's DNA by fusing it with animal DNA which is why he is growing quickly and becoming more violent. George suddenly loses his cool and begins to attack the cage, eventually breaking it and escaping. Then he starts rampaging into the church, causing mayhem among the visitors, and even smashing automobiles with his fists. As soon as the cops show there, they prepare to shoot him, but Davis intervenes and uses sign language to pacify George. The police laid their weapons down, but a helicopter sniper didn't receive the message and shot George with tranquilizer darts. Burke and his group, meanwhile, stumble upon Ralph, the mutant wolf, in the wilderness. From the helicopter, they are able to shoot him down, after which they land and search for his body. A few troops are alarmed when they discover a large paw print on the ground in place of the body, which has vanished. Ralph suddenly attacks a few seconds later and starts murdering each soldier one by one. They attempt to protect themselves with their guns, and the helicopter also fires a machine gun 
but Ralph has a very thick skin from the earlier shot, so the bullets just irritate him. He has also gotten so enormous that he can assault the aircraft and destroy it by leaping incredible distances in the air. Burke, the lone survivor, tries to battle the wolf once again on the ground, but Ralph simply eats him. As George is being transported away in a government plane with Davis and Kate, Agent Russell of the FBI arrests them for doing illegitimate experiments on him. Davis observes George's wounds are already healing when he is in the cage. The two are then subjected to an interrogation by Russell, who insults them and ignores their warnings about the dangers of keeping George in a plane, while making fun of Davis for leaving the army to care for animals. He also discloses that Kate tried to steal research from Energine two years prior, for which she was imprisoned for 13 months. As a result, she was fired from the company. Davis loses faith in Kate as a result of her admission that she cannot genuinely heal George. Back in Energine, Claire hears that Kate was detained, and Brett views Kate as a threat since he believes she is gathering information to bring down the corporation. Claire devises a plan after learning that she does possess a treatment for the mutagen. She will use low-frequency radio waves to call all the mutant animals to her building, where the military will murder them. While Claire collects their DNA for later sale, she doesn't care about Kate because she is certain that George will eventually kill everyone on the plane. Ralph quickly stops destroying the cars and the roads as Claire turns on the device and begins moving towards the city. The mutant crocodile Lizzie detects it as well and takes off as well. George is supposed to be sedated on the flight but Claire's deception wakes him up in a rage. He wrecks the cage and begins tormenting everything around him, throwing people around like they were of no consequence. When Russell tries to pursue him, George immediately knocks him down with his foot, as the guards begin firing at him ineffectively. Davis tries to converse with him, but just then another soldier resumes shooting further enraging George. The plane begins to descend after a bullet strikes a box of explosives, which explodes and destroys the turbine. Davis rushes to put parachutes on himself, Kate, and Russell, just as George is being pushed up against the wall by a cart. They are able to get off the plane before it crashes while George is still inside it. However, they are unable to locate the body when they land and search the crash site. However, there is a path on the grass, showing that George survived and is also heading towards the city. When the FBI shows up to collect all of Energine's research and data, Claire is furious to learn Kate survived the plane crash. Claire claims to the agents that Kate was responsible for the devastation the creatures produced in an effort to clear her own identity. With regard to Davis, he attempts to leave Kate behind, since he is sick of always witnessing the worst aspects of humanity, which he has already experienced in great measure during the war. He found George when he was just a young child hiding beneath the car, watching as people butchered his mother. Davis, however, chooses to give Kate another chance after hearing her justification for developing CRISPR. She intended to find a treatment for her brother's fatal sickness, but when the corporation wanted to weaponize the mutagen, she attempted to destroy it and was imprisoned as a result. Her brother passed away while she was incarcerated. Russell contacts his guys to be rescued since he now likes the pair because they save his life. Colonel Blake then takes the party to an airbase where he shows them video of George and Ralph escaping to the city. Kate claims they are being beckoned by something, indicating that Claire must be waiting with an antidote. Davis points out that it is impossible for a gorilla and a wolf to travel in a straight line to the same destination. Russell defends their suggestions, but Blake tells them to leave, since he doesn't want any bystanders getting hurt. When his attempts to reason with the troops outside to let them leave fail, Davis launches a fight and soon knocks both guards out. When Russell spots them attempting to steal a helicopter, he gives them the keys and a phone so they can stay in touch. Blake's crew tries to halt the animals in the meantime, but all of their weapons, including the large explosions, are futile and the army is destroyed. Russell informs Davis, who is skeptical that they can get everyone out in time, that Blake has decided to evacuate the city before the animals arrive. When George and Ralph get to the city, the havoc starts right away. They knock down buildings, wreck cars, and even shoot any approaching helicopter. The military confronts them with an enormous army of tanks and weapons, but nothing stops the animals from destroying everything in their path. Lizzie soon follows down the river, joining the other creatures to inflict even more destruction by biting the tanks and jets that stand in its path with its large mouth. Blake, who is in need of a solution, instructs his troops to prepare a bomb that will destroy half of the city. Russell makes an effort to convince Blake to change his mind by saying Davis and Kate are on their way to get the antidote, but Blake doesn't believe him because they took his chopper, so he sends Russell outside. When Russell learns the outcome of the evidence discovered at the company, he immediately calls for a ride, so he can make some arrests. Davis and Kate reach Energine and take three antidote vials, as the bomb-carrying plane takes flight. The cure will stop the aggression, but keep the animal's size, Claire explains as she approaches to stop them after spotting them on the security cams. She then grabs the vials from Kate and shoots Davis 
who collapses unconscious to the ground. After that, Claire kidnaps Kate and takes her to the roof with her. However, George scales the building to the top and destroys the helicopter's tail before they can escape. Kate is also on the verge of passing away as a result, but Davis returns and grabs her as he explains that no essential organs were struck by the bullet. Kate says she was able to keep one of the vials, so they can still save George at least. While George goes on to smash the antenna, sending the signal. Once more, as Claire tries to confront the pair, Kate takes advantage of the opportunity to stow the antidote in her bag before hitting her. While Davis calls for his friend, in order to obtain the antidote and Kate, George advances and snatches her. In the meantime, Brad is attempting to leave the building using the stairs, taking the final computer and a lab rat with him so he may resume his business later. Russell runs into him on the ground floor, and the agent gives him the items in exchange for letting him go, rather than detaining him. However, as soon as Brett exits the building, he is unexpectedly struck by falling debris. While George begins to calm down as a result of the antidote outside, Lizzie and Ralph help to destroy the building. The broken helicopter is taken by Davis and Kate just before the building collapses, saving their lives, while also forcing the chopper to crash to the ground. Davis then observes that many civilians are still present, and that George is now feeling better. When Davis sees Lizzie and Ralph fighting, he orders Kate to go fetch Russell. While he arms himself and joins the battle with George, Lizzie ultimately kills Ralph by biting him on the neck as the creatures roll around and trade savage blows. Now when George and Lizzie are engaged in combat, it appears like George is finding it difficult to gain the upper hand, so Davis launches a belt of grenades at Lizzie's back. Sadly, Lizzie has become extremely strong and the explosives hardly make a dent. After swiftly recovering, Lizzie tosses George against a wall, breaking a steel rod through the gorilla's chest. Then Lizzie tries to approach him to finish him off, but Davis steps in and uses all of the helicopter's weaponry to divert the crocodile. Lizzie succumbs to it and starts pursuing Davis, nearly murdering him. To put an end to the fight, George takes the steel bar and leaps into the air before stabbing Lizzie in the eyes. Russell receives Kate's message regarding the antidote and phones Blake to relay the information. Blake decides to cancel the airstrike mission after seeing the dead on the displays and realizing George is doing well. Unfortunately, George faints after victory victory, forcing Davis to pause and mourn his best buddy. However, just as Davis is about to leave, he detects some twitching and realizes George is playing a practical joke on him. Before Davis and the gorilla give each other a fist bump, the gorilla extends his middle finger. Davis's current task is to locate a location where George can be kept.